alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I'd like to start with a caveat that I'm not your student, and I, this is my first session here. Um, as a mother, I think my biggest concern is obviously my child is growing up in this void of this knowledge. So I just want to know, um, in relation to what you were saying about institutions that were established back in the day, like pondos and masajids and all that, so are there any surviving learning institutions like the pondos in Malaysia today that have maintained its integrity as established? And if there is, what, 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 what is it or what are they? And, and if there isn't, what are the efforts being made today? And if we have actually, in fact, established for, you know, like um, the actual pondo sort of style for my child. Thank you. Well, uh, to the first question about uh, existence of pondos. Yes, uh, actually, if you follow the development of the of the pondos, uh, they have recently uh, underwent a revival, I think, uh, in the northern states, northern belt of, of Malaysia, pondo. Pasir Tumbuh and a number of these pondos, what they have done is to connect themselves again with the international network of scholars, in particular the ones coming from other remote, uh, from Syria. Uh, they, some of them at least, uh, understood that the, as, uh, the, 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 the dangers of ossification, so they, they understood what they, they inherited in the sense of the Turah. For example, you can get in Malay, yes, if you don't possess Arabic, in beautiful Malay, uh, uh, a, a package, yes, uh, a work in fiqih. For example, uh, you can begin with say the Munyatul Musalli, yes, meaning to say that teaches you the very foundations of salat and so on from the uh, Shafi'i fiqih. And then, uh, in in terms of aqidah, uh, you can read uh, introductions. Um, well, what's a basic work in in? So there's there's equivalence in the Malay and in the Arabic, and that, there's also advanced works in aqidah. Uh, but there is also, for example, in Tasawuf, uh, you know, you may begin with a work called uh, Kitab Penawah Hati. Yes, uh, Kitab Penawah Hati is basically a very s small, succinct uh, summary of the uh, the third and the fourth quarters of the Ihya Ulumuddin. And for those of them who are more confident, they can progress to read the Hidayah to Salikin, and from there they can go on to read the Sairu Salikin, advanced levels. So, and this now is now no longer just restricted to the Pondos. But these are being done in community centers, uh, you know, just across the street. In, in Haq, they are reading some of these works. Uh, it's also being read in mosques. It's being read in offices. They have, been, they have introduced this in, in some offices, yes. In their surah, they are reading some of these works. And these are some of the things that you can do. You can equip yourself with it first. Because uh, ultimately, if you're worried about your children, you, you have to prepare yourself. Yes. But if you talk to your children about these things, the, the parents are the first madrasa of the children. So if you imbibe yourself, you speak with the Palembang Malay of the 1900s, you know, you should understand what are your cultural equivalents. You know, for example, in the West, they, they know, I mean, at least amongst the learned, the learned, they know where to place, say, Beowulf in comparison with Shakespeare. They know where to place... Uh, you know, Dante in reference to, say, the modern writers. These are the sort of things that those with cultural nuances can do. So you ought to develop that sort of, uh, shall we say, sensitivity to the, the intellectual tradition of Islam and particularly the ones produced here. Try to read a work in Malay, in Fiqih, one in Tasawuf, one in Aqidah. And then in addition to that, try to pick up from some of the other fields that has been produced. A good guide will be Encyclopedia, uh, I think, Karya Classic Dalam Bahasa Melayu, gathered together by one, Haji Wan Muhammad Sarir, a, a, a very important scholar in, in uh, say, unearthing this, this network of connections. He, he has done uh, a great labor for all of us in that he has gathered all these manuscripts that were still available, catalogued them, wrote about them, and say, in, the early, in the early years of the 2000s, he wrote uh, almost a weekly column. So basically, he has catalogued and gathered together a great part of, of, of uh, this, this Turath. And we said also that some of these madrasas are still exi in, in existence. However, be careful that there's always pitfalls, because sometimes they think that these madrasa are the be-all and the end-all. So therefore, they, they, they are not connected to the networks. This is where you can overcome this when, when you say understand, for example, that uh, uh, an institution like ISTAC that was built, yeah, between 90, uh, and uh, directed by Professor Alatas between 1990s and the early 2000s. 
the work produced by Istec is amazing because right now the the the, the, the Istec publications reflects a new uh, or uh, responds creatively to the demands of the age right now. So not only does Istec, for example, publishes theses or had uh, thesis studies of the Malay intellectual world, but also gathers together students from all quarters so that the people from the Turkish Islamic world, from the Persian Islamic world, from the uh, from the Indo-Pakistan uh, Islamic world, all gather together alongside the ones who are now responding to Western challenges, European challenges, challenges of American philosophy, and so on. This this all was reflected in the in the culture of Istek. So Istek is like one of our best modern representative of the traditional institution, because despite it being modern and responding. Uh, to the modern day challenges and the in the lectures all conducted in English, the students not only study uh, Arabic, they study Malay, they study uh, also Persian, and some of them, depending on the the requirements and the needs of their thesis, had to study German, Latin, Greek, uh, and uh, the, the advanced students in in some of their thesis would compare for and compare and critic between say Gibbon, Edward Gibbon and say Atabari, they could do a, a comparison between Eusebius and Atabari. Some of them managed to compare between say Hegel and uh, Ibn Khaldun. So basically that's, that's the extent of the, the creative, uh, say the, 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 the creative appropriation of your Torah in order to uh, face the challenges of the time. And some of these works are, are, are meant to be written perhaps by some of you. Yes, the, 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 the tradition of Istak. Uh, is still continued now in Cassis. Uh, Cassis is still doing that. Uh, Prof. Zaini is still doing a running commentary in Islam and the philosophy of science in which this chapter engages with uh, you know, the best literature in modern day philosophy of science. You know, we discuss Kuhn, we discuss Feraban, we discuss even, uh, even the, the social philosophers, we discuss the Vienna Circle in light of the intellectual tradition of Islam. So that's, that's some of the means through which you can, you can progress, progress further. But at the very least, you take some of these things. And this, right now, perhaps, when, when the, the, the institutions may disent disintegrate, we, have, we might have to come back to the institutions as scholars again. It has to be ijazah from teacher-student again.